as you walk in, you actually hear as a door just boom, kicks down as a large man with wild hair and a beard and a plaid jacket on comes out into the middle of the street. What the fuck is that? It took 10 years to push them back, but we did. What was once a prosperous river trade, the Mississippi, is now the front line. The eastern states supply the river states, and what's left of the UA live out their meager days self-policing. What is the West hiding? Nobody really knows for sure. But we're alive. And this is the new frontier. Okay, so you see a man pull himself out wielding a axe? Hatchet. Hatchet. <laughs> As uh, he sits and joins us at the table. <laughs> welcome, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so welcome yet. I'm firing a warning shot. Oh. Uh, pew! Warning. Not close to him. Right. Stay put! That was the weakest way I possibly could have said that. <laughs> Stay put, motherfucker! <laughs> I stand still as the bullet moves past. I don't move at all. Blink as the water goes down. A couple beats pass. I ain't moving. What's your name? Kent. What's yours? Ray. All right, Ray. Right! Anyone want to join in here? I can't tell you. You're at the crow's nest. No, What's you going on? Are, are you guys... No, I mean, we can hear you saying that uh, stuff. We're, they are we're... still at the back of the... I mean, you're all in the rail driver. Yeah. Jane's in, in the, the conductor yeah. seat. All right, and the, the, the semi-truck is off the rails. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we got I, a stop, company. I stop the rail driver, and I hop down. I'm still by the rail driver. Yeah. Good company or bad company? Can't decide yet. A live company. <laughs> Looks like you guys made a lot of noise out here. Uh, can I try to stealth and move around and flank behind him? I'm not trying to get very close to him, but absolutely. I want to I stay out of his eye line. Yeah, make a, make a stealth right now. Okay. And would you do me a favor, do a spot listen. Roll it and okay. see what's up. Okay. Is there a specific reason why you wanted to block this railway? I came to this town for a reason. But I don't know if I'm willing to tell you that yet because you haven't told me why you are here. Oh, just pass it. Okay. We're on the railroad. Can I start to walk forward? I'm going to start to walk <laughs> forward to yeah. test her. So I wouldn't do it. I'm going to keep walking. Uh, hands, it... hands shown, no weapons. Just walking forward, open hands. I'm going to spray far in front of him. Okay. You spray in front. <laughs> whoa, 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 Ray, Ray. Kent. It's gonna get him to stop. Fine. All right, I stop. Got my attention now. I kind of give you a little. <laughs> I'm, listening, I'm listening now. Okay. Listen, Ray. I, I think it's fine. We just need to talk to the guy. So go talk to him. But let's keep him. Let's keep him on his toes and let's keep his hands up. We're um, headed to the Livingston community. How about that? Makes two of us. Or five of us. You don't see me yet. Makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you headed there? I told you, I'm looking for somebody. Are you traveling on foot? No. And I'm going to peer around to see if my car is still intact since the big building. Boom. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> a little bit of irritation in the eyes. Well, I was. <laughs> Hand's still up, so you can tell it's starting to get to him a little bit. He's like, well, you guys just rolled into my house, knocked over my car, and shot some bullets at me. All right, so I, cr I creep up behind him, and I say, why did you block our path? And I'm going to kind of look up, hearing the voice, and I'm going to not look back. I'm just going to say, because there's 100,000 souls out there, and they all got vendettas. Put that on a pillow. <laughs> Are we allowed to have a more emo guy than me? Is that, is that a thing? He just I'm woke sorry. up. He just I'm woke sorry. up. He's very out of it. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm Ray obsessed. genuinely He's starts laughing. <laughs> I'm going to pull my rifle back. I'm going to pull my AK-47 back. I'm going to climb down and I'm going to hop out there. I'm going to be like, you are one crazy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm, I'm walk right up to this guy. My name's Ray. Ken, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is a perfect cue to start having the road start to rumble as area around you starts to kind of kips. And at first, you thought maybe the building was shifting and moving again, but you just hear a just like something just as if someone just dropped like a 20 ton weight onto the ground and it just shifted like a minor tremor, like a tiny in the, earthquake. In the building. Like the building went down? No, the building didn't go down. Uh, but it's about to. Well, no, it's, you didn't see the building shift at all. It definitely sounded like something collapsed for sure. What you got in there? Well, if I know, I just got here last night, but I don't think it's safe. I don't think it is either. How fast can we get those cables off? Um, like, just, just uh, not too long. It's just unhooking. In fact, at this point, if you wanted to, you could just take bolt cutters and just clip them if you That's wanted exactly to. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm undoing them. Okay. Because it's off the tracks, so right? It's, it's off the tracks. You crimped them, okay. so you're gonna have to just bolt cut just the crimpers off, you know, oh. just yeah, to yeah, hold yeah. into it. But oh. you can keep the length. The length. Oh, okay. oh, and Kent, your small friend can come too. Hmm. So Kent's gonna like look up to the, the building tops to kind of his eyes kind of go over the horizon and he sees kind of like something kind of dart off and it kind of goes, flies down on top of the light post right there and it's a falcon. It's a red, red falcon, red feathered falcon. I look at you and I nod very approvingly. <laughs> <laughs> we have two. <laughs> you gotta be shitting me, this is <laughs> not fun. That's uh, yours? Yeah. They're pretty easy to catch, harder to feed. Oh, right. <laughs> Listen, it, maybe we can have this conversation out of the rain. Sounds good. I, I got a couple know. things inside the building. My hands are still up. If you let me, you want to come with me, we'll go get them. I don't know that anyone wants to go in that building, but we got to go fast, whatever happens. And he's mentioning the MP5 that I have with the stock, the extended yeah, stock. Yeah, if you want to go in there and get it, now's the, go, go, yeah. go. Now's the time. Okay. Basically, run inside. And as you start to run inside, you can actually see uh, on the far side of the building, you can see a sinkhole has opened up. Just a collapsed sinkhole right not too far from where the lamppost where your falcon is currently perched at the moment. Mm. You can see parts of the concrete as well as the asphalt road just collapsed in on itself and now there's just a giant crater that's kind of living amidst the part of that crossroads. On this side of things, you're basically seeing through this tree. Okay. You basically just see the sinkhole right in front of you because oh, the front door is. that Kent came out of is essentially right there. This whole confrontation went down basically right next to this giant garbage truck. All right. Okay. I, I put my hand on, on Kent's uh, shoulder and say, wait, sometimes they come from below. And it all seems still and quiet for the moment. You guys hurry up. I gotta get inside. I have a gun and something else. Great, go get it, fast. Are you with him? No, I'm yeah. No, Wraith's with him. <laughs> yeah. So, Wraith, are you standing outside while he's going inside? Yeah, I mean, I can see the rail driver from here, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's only okay. like 10 feet behind you. Okay. All right, he goes, I'll stand guard. Be quick or we leave you. All right. So then I'm gonna get up and run over towards where the corner was with the little burlap sap that I'd put my hat on. And I'm gonna grab the MP5, and I'm gonna grab something really small in my hand. Go uh, grab your MP5. Grab the MP5 first. Is it in the big one? I think it's in the big one. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't know what that is. We don't know good. <laughs> That'll do. Oh, jeez. All right. It's kind of nice to have an automatic weapon in the apocalypse, isn't it? Yeah. He's going to pull one other small little thing, and he's almost going to see, he can know this, that Wraith's eyes are on him. So he's going to look as he grabs it and let Wraith know that it's not anything dangerous or volatile like a grenade. Mm. You can see it's not big, but he catches a little bit of the tail and looks like a little action figure. Okay. Kent is very protective about it. And he looks and he just puts it in his pocket and then goes okay. on, grabs a gun and walks out. All right, so now Kent's back out with uh, Wraith at the moment. All right. Uh, as you guys continue to come out, um, you can start to hear sounds, something. Guys! <laughs> Let's get this thing going. As you can start to see, infected beginning to pour out of that sinkhole uh. as dust and gravel again to be poured away. And actually the first one you see seems to be an incredibly large man and his hands are like the size of dinner plates. 
as he's moving away piles of dirt as he pushes his head up. <laughs> as he pulls himself out of the sinkhole. Let's put intent on. Watch out for bangs on the other side of the wall. I know. I'm like, yeah. All right, so Ray, you're shooting? <laughs> yep. I am getting this rolling. We're going. We're leaving. Right. And then Wraith? Uh, I'm going to pull out my bow and try, try to take a shot Great. at one of them if I can. Oh. Closest one, I guess. Band-Aid. Panic? Um, I guess I'll keep the door open towards them. Right. Uh, so that there's an opening. So as we, we move, Great. they can jump in. They can jump Assist? in. Are you just helping them get in? Yeah, yeah helping okay. them get in. Okay. And Kent? I'm going to be flanking with Wraith also. And since my gun is already out, I'll load it and ready to fire if I have a clear shot. Firing. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys are, she's back at the... Yeah, everyone else just seems to be okay, inside. Okay, inside the truck. All right. So Jenny. I'm behind you, basically. I got it. Side by side, kind of with Ray. Me! <laughs> Ray, who's shooting, you can take your speed dice and your damage dice. Jenny, no roll for you. You're getting everything up and moving. Wraith, you know what to do for your bow shot. Uh, Band-Aid, nothing in particular. Speed. Uh, Kent, if you'd like to hold with a trigger, you can make a composure check right now. Well done. Well, <laughs> you have the most composure. You have the most composure. Worthy. Super composure. So for this purposes, Pleasure. since that's a reaction, I'll essentially allow you to do your speed whenever you want it. Okay. Next round. So which means if you want to go at the top of the round or the end of the round, up to you whenever you want to fire this thing. Okay. All right? Roll them up. Oof. All right, speed dice explode, yes? Yes, they do. That's a sad, sad thing. 14. 11. 14, that's so bad. 19. 21. All right. Woof. All right, so Ray, you're the first one up. Five degrees of success. Yeah, Woo! I was going to say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you've got that whole group at this point. You can fire into it. So how would you like to resolve your uh, your your degrees of success? Um, I think I want, how oh, do I want to take out more or massively that one guy? That's up to you. It is up to me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. My hands are too small. <laughs> Uh, depletion is 10, 15, 15 20, 20, fuck me, 24. Okay. Ooh. I'm still good. You're good. So good that I can do. That was um, the whole clip. Yeah. <laughs> so you oh, unload. So you, I, I mean, you're up there and you're just, you're kind of just putting stuff in there and you down. Uh, you down one of them for sure. Okay. Like one of them just claps down one I of the front like ones. I don't like her hair. Yeah. <laughs> so she just clamors. You see a couple of them seem to just, you know, just kind of like, like looking around them as their bullets are kind of coming around them as they move back up and start to uh, paw themselves forward more. Um, so they will be the ones that go next. All right. He's a little slower at least. Excellent. <laughs> Resolved. And now Wraith. All right, so I had two degrees of failure. Okay. Um, but I'd like to try to spend two competence points and, narr and narrate basically me just having a, a normal... So just roll one dice, yeah. as if you had one degree of success because it's minimum, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Narrate um, for me. Which is enough for a hit. So yeah, it, it takes Wraith some time to get his, uh, his bow ready, and you see he, uh, it's, his, his hand is, is wet from the rain, and so is the arrow. And so he's trying to just starting to pull it back, and you see he drops it. And the arrow just falls from the, falls to the ground. Right. And then with, without a second of hesitation, he wipes his hand on his cloak, and then pulls around and pulls out another one and fires. Great. Okay. So you'll do it, and because that was awesomely narrated, I'll just have it be two depletion points. So okay. because you dropped that arrow instead. Okay. All right. So here's my one damage die. Five. Mm. Excellent. Oh Not great, but. So you took it. I mean, he took an arrow in the shoulder for sure. One of them just. <laughs> as it's basically hit straight into it, and you watch yeah. as it kind of like bends over. Uh, you've also... Maybe the, maybe the white hair one, because white hair I, I don't great. like competition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> All right. uh, and not only did you do damage to it, but I'm going to add speed to it for the next round, okay. because it is Slow injured. A little bit. You've cool. injured it for sure. Right. Um, great. Now that we're back at the top of the round again, so I'm looking for intense. You can go whenever you want. Got it. I think first, uh, now that he's watched one go down and another one take an arrow, I'm going to tap Wraith on the shoulder mm -hmm. and, 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 and move to the left 
towards the Mercedes-Benz's car. So I'm going to move away from this. I'm going to run behind the bus. Yeah, move your Mini. Go for it. So I see them coming here, and you took one out. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder. Uh-huh, to signal the gear. And we're going to try and go over here so that probably behind this car. I'm going to run over there so that I have an open. I can still see a, a blocked shot of these, but I have a clear shot from where I'm at. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And when would you like to go? Do you want to do that at the top of the round? Then it'll add a one? I'm going to do that at the top of the okay. round to make sure that no shit happens before So if he taps I me, I don't know if this is part of the next round, but if he taps me on the shoulder, I'm going to be backing away towards the, the, Absolutely. the rail driver. Yes. Yeah, it's now all part of it. Now that I know what he's it. doing. As Absolutely. an action, I see kind of this happening, and I'm like, Oi, why aren't you running to the Get rail driver? <laughs> Where, oh, where is the rail over driver? There. Over there. He doesn't know okay. that. I don't yeah, know that. Know that. So oh my bad. So do you see where the uh, uh, do you see where the back of that garbage truck is? Yes. Yeah. The rail That's driver is right at the, the rail end of that. Right road. at the end of that. Kent sees that and is kind of panicked. Had a moment of like he's so used to being alone. You know what I'm saying? That he kind of like ran over to the car, thinking it was the safe spot. But then looked behind him and started backing up. Like, look, <laughs> you're going the wrong way. <laughs> and in that moment, let's say his eyes kind of like went off to the horizon. He's still looking for somebody. Maybe it was a last ditch uh. effort. He was looking to see if there was anyone there. He mm. didn't see it. And I'm only getting away with this much movement because of the composure check before, because I waited the whole round. So like while he was fiddling with the bow, I could have been making my way over mm -hmm. there. Okay. And when the shot went off is when I saw it. And then when we start retreating back. Right so there. we'll get to that. So basically okay. as you come around the side to where that garbage truck is, may I suggest that maybe you end right where the end of the garbage, of the garbage truck, truck is. Yes. I, I will remove the mini. He's still got line of sight on yeah. the big guy. And that's one of those you're attempting to run towards it and Band-Aid waves his hand. <laughs> and, this is what I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you catch yourself and you stop as you get right to where that garbage truck is. Now do me a favor, make a spot listen check. Okay. Just right now, this is a reaction. This is a moment right here. 55. So, spot listen is at, so that's two degrees of failure. Okay, let me hear everyone's intent and then I'll lay out this information. I'm um, shooting again. Shooting, right? Um, I'm looking very, I mean, I'm not gonna do it willy-nilly, but I'm, I wanna try to get back to the rail driver as quickly as possible. Back up and shoot. But I'm also, I'm worried, I'm worried about like, I'm keeping an eye on my, my peripherals uh -huh. to stuff, so stuff doesn't come out from behind the edge of the building or the back of the garbage truck. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, there might be something in that garbage truck. So. Right. So uh, then Jenny's and basically you've got ready, this thing moving. I'm ready to yeah. move. I don't wanna ditch anyone. Pull the throttle. Yeah, but like, we gotta get, once again, Slowly moving and I mean not fast enough that you guys can't out you know jump up right. on but like so, get on. <laughs> so I see the confusion and the stuff that's happening and I'm like it's not registering with him. I'm thinking he's panicking. Right. So I'm gonna go out there and physically be like grab him this way. Okay. I'd like you to make a spot listen. <laughs> spot listen? Yes, please. Cool. Thirty five. Two degrees of success. Right. Okay. This is what's gonna happen. Ray, you're still shooting out from the bottom. Wraith. Getting back to the rail driver is, is, is my biggest priority. Then just take two speed dice, and mm -hmm. that'll get you into the rail driver. Okay. And then you're shooting, and then Bandit and Kent are there. So here's what I'm going to tell you, now that you're both next to where this garbage truck is. Um, Bandit, as you kind of are getting Kent together for a moment, uh, Kent, you accidentally hit basically the bottom of this, uh, of this garbage truck as you come around, taking some superficial damage. You basically cut yourself as you come across because this thing cocoon, cocoon, comes down as it spills out. And Band-Aid, you look down to basically see like a human rat nest of small items and pieces. And when I mean human, I mean like rags and dirty clothes, things that were used for insulation. The human and scale. Small pieces of food like snack bars and MREs and items. It just looks like just discarded um, human waste, not like fecal matter, but just just trash. waste, trash, as it pours out from the garbage truck. And it's clearly, whatever the garbage that was in there is actually not in there, but this stuff, at first you think it's just trash uh -huh. as it comes out, but then it's clear that someone made a little nest inside of this place. And what's very interesting is you actually uh, see a bunch of small toys come out, as well as a little girl's doll that spills out, that's missing an arm. My eyes go wide a little bit, kind of like, you know, like half there it was all along, half shocked. We gotta go, what is this? We don't have time for this. 
you damn toot and we don't. And I'm gonna pull him yeah. back uh, okay. towards the real driver. All right. And then, uh, let me just make a quick check real quick. Okay. Um, fair enough. You guys grab Kent and you start pulling everybody back into the rail driver. And uh, just roll your speed dice and you can roll your damage as well too. Crap. This is why I don't do it. The crap way always turns out better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That two, uh, that's uh, two degrees of failure. All right. Um, but I also have my four competence right. points, so I'm going to turn into flows to make this just disappear. Disappear. All right. Um, so you don't get as much of a burst as you did beforehand, right. as unfortunately, uh, or fortunate for me, is, is that the garbage truck kind of provides a lot of cover for these creatures as they come around on the left side of the building, more where Kent and Band-Aid are as they're coming around. What was you for your speed? Two dice. Five. Five, okay. And then you two. Actually, at this point, everybody's barreled into the rail driver at this stage, right? Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'm, a, I'm a seven for my speed dice. Oh, you're so. seven? Okay, you yeah. would have gone at the same time, which means you would have gone before everybody else. So, as you, all five of you, just rush into the rail driver, you watch as several of the creatures basically come around to the side of the garbage truck, just barreling maybe 10, 15 feet away from where you are before you slam the door right alongside of you, and we can take the minis off um, because you're in the rail driver now at this point. And Jenny, I'm assuming as soon as oh, they're in, bam. We'll throttle, go. Yeah. full <laughs> open. <laughs> open her yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Open with coal, with coal. With coal, yeah. oh. oh gosh. Okay, so it lurches <laughs> all of you forward. Everyone make balance checks. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, no, okay. no, you're doing the right thing. I'm careful on the ground. I care if I'm in the We don't know driver. if there's any more runners. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Um, cool. All right, let's dish him out. Uh, four degrees of failure. Four of failure for Ray. Uh, I have a 39 in balance and I rolled a... 48? 48, so... Mostly interesting degrees of success. So it's yeah. one. So it's one degree three of failure. Three One degree of failure. <laughs> one degree of failure. You need three failures? Three fails. Okay. Three fails in Wraith? I have two failures. Oh, it's looks all failures stuff. all around. This happens so fast, you all yeah. moved a little bit. I was fine. All right, how would you like to resolve your degrees of failure? Okay, I had two degrees of failure, so I got to the back of the, uh, the rail driver, yes. and I managed to start to jump and get my first foot in, yeah. and that's when it took off and yeah. it lurched. So my weight goes out from under me, but I have so much forward momentum that I slide. Yes. And then as I'm sliding, my combat knife sheath, yes. uh, which is at my waist, gets flipped up uh, on the lip of the edge of the rail driver yeah. and, and falls out of the, the rail driver. Okay, so we're so, ditching the combat knife we're and rom prone. My... That's absolutely worth two degrees of failure. So uh, Failure at the wrong time. That's two degrees. All right, great. Uh, Jenny. All right, three degrees of failure. So when I open this throttle way too quickly, one of my toolkits spills over and yeah. one of my just the most valuable tools is slipping and falling into one of the cracks and I panic and I let go of the throttle for a moment to see if I can reach it and I can't, it, it slips, it's gone All and right. I, I grab the throttle again and just try and compose myself but I've, I've lost a very important tool. I will, uh, so you would like to just maybe reduce your toolkit from a times two to a times one? Yeah. So let's do that. I also would like to make a suggestion that maybe it took a little bit of superficial damage on you as it fell off and maybe banged you against the hip Absolutely. or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. So let's take four damage dice, or four damage uh, against your <laughs> yes, threshold. Yes. Sorry. Four, four, dice. Four, dice. Yes. four damage. Four damage against your threshold. And I think, yeah. that's, I think that's worth all three. So right now she, just, she has some superficial damage. All right, Band-Aid, you're fine. Yeah, I watched Wraith biff it. <laughs> oh, I did a cool oh, slide, okay? So yeah. Okay, so cool slide. Down. So helpful. Um, I'm going to trade in my last two competence points to take away two degrees of failure. Again. All right. So as it jerks forward, my feet slip, yes. and I uh, brace myself <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. Guns out, like right. it's, it's down this way, and I'm dangling yeah. for a little bit before I can find my way back. Right. That's worth one. Okay. 
then uh, I'm gonna slip down a couple of slip down a couple of runs, hit my chin. Hit your chin before I grab. Oh. All right, take four. Okay. Battle, battle, battle make that'll uh, make you bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dentist. My tongue's too sharp anyway. So that's worth another one. Uh -huh. Great. There you go. That was a perfect example of how to resolve degrees of failure, everybody. Thanks. Kent! I have one degree of failure. Um, as I'm running into the back of the train with Wraith, I was scratched myself on the garbage truck earlier. Right. Yeah. Was that my arm or my leg? Where would you like it to be? I wanted it to be like my hip, yeah. honestly, because I was running by and I kind of caught it on the bumper. Great. And I'm going to say that when I jump into the train, I lean up against the side on that damaged hit. And Ugh. with that and the force of the train, I just smash against the wall and fall on my ass. So I'm yeah. just sitting right on my butt. You know, okay, but next to me, the, the sitting now we're both yeah. just kind of plopped, yeah. plopped down. Yeah, that's great. You're prone. That okay. hurt, yeah. but everything's fine. Okay. Okay. So now that that's all, over. You're all basically on the floor. As nice driving, I'm gonna, Gunner. I'm going to look over at the driver and be like, <laughs> give her a good little that. nod. <laughs> 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 nice driving, Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> so as the rail driver scrapes along the side of this semi-truck, leaving just rakes of cuts and scratches all across it, and you can hear the metal on metal grinding as it's basically coming out of its stop, going off into the rails in the early part of the morning. You watch as essentially the infected moving at a much slower pace than what you saw. The prairie dogs further kind of just are looking up as much as they can as you slowly lose them in the distance and they don't attempt to make any kind of pursuit whatsoever. I'm gonna get up and kind of look out one of the gun flap windows almost desperately like and watching the town go by as if he just saw something very valuable pass. And then I'm gonna look to you and I'm gonna look at Band-Aid and I'm gonna ask him, did you see that? The stuff, the yeah. trash, in the trash uh, truck? Yeah, but I'll tell you what I was there for. Mm -hmm. I was looking for somebody, like I said, and uh, I was looking for the person whose items those did belong to. Was it, was it a kid? Fortunately it was. Do you think they're still there? Yeah, but do I think we can save her? No. I saw something enter that truck last night when I was looking. It looked human size. I thought you said it was one of them. That's what I thought at the time. All right, we can all talk about this as I patch up your injuries. I saw you guys biff it pretty badly. And uh, yeah, you're nice bleeding from the mouth. Yeah, it's just my chin. It's no okay. big deal. It's, it's, All right, it's everybody scary. sit down. <clears throat> Jenny, you okay? Uh, I uh, hurt my hip pretty bad. Um, All right, I'll get to you in a minute. So as you're looking forward, you're continuing to kind of drive along endless plains. Okay. It's, it's still mostly grasslands. You've actually intersected with the Missouri River. So as you're starting to move across, you can actually see as the Missouri, which is to your right, is now kind of bending and is now coming alongside the rails. Mm. And now you are officially running along the Missouri on this Missouri River Runner route. How do you guys feel about stopping this rail driver so I can fix the back properly? Maybe some of you can go hunt, get some food. We're running low. Yeah, man, you're the boss. Go for it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Break. <laughs> but gently, <laughs> gently. Uh, great. So that's not a problem. You basically pull out into the middle of nothing. But you can hear a very, <clears throat> very rampant Missouri River because of the storm last night. Oh, Lord, you can so actually much. see that the water level is significantly higher than it was. You can see it's running really fast. But it's it would be a beautiful scenic route if you were just uh, driving a regular train along this side. Hmm. I call crow's nest. So okay, but... No, I'm just like, I call it. I'm joking. Go. I'm gonna fix your... I thought you just did. I have, I have to roll. Yeah, you gotta roll it <laughs> up. Do the things. Hurry up. But luckily, we're inside the rail driver, right. and so my first aid kit is a times two, right. which makes my bonus t plus 18 to my 72, so it's I have a, a 98. So mm. don't nine. roll 100. Yeah. <laughs> 93. <laughs> so I have at least... 
No. That's one degree of, one degree of, of success. success. Yeah. Yeah. So it's totally fine. And, and right. um, Dude, is this thing going to scar? Is that what you're adds, doing? <laughs> I can take one depletion point and it adds uh, another degree of, success, of your uh, injury. Yeah. Okay, so it so. takes that off your four points. Yeah. All right, Wraith, you next. Where are you hurt? I am uninjured. Are you sure? I, took, I saw you take a tumble. I lost my knife. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Okay. Next. Can't fix souls, but. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but my hip's a little damaged. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, go ahead and. Uh... <laughs> I don't oh, want to laugh at you. <laughs> I can't fix souls, but my hip's a little hurt. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna unbutton uh, my drop pants and just drop trow and yeah. just I like, pull it down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just really just cold compress. So this is just bruised at that point, but um, but you did actually take damage, right? Superficial damage. I did yeah. take four points of superficial damage. damage. Okay. Yes. Uh, three degrees of success. So I'm gonna patch you up with a cold second compress. De second depletion. A little please. kiss. A little kiss. A little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Help yes, me out. Hey Jenny, what's yes, up? Oh, I just. I hit my hip pretty what hard. What is it with you guys? Hips. hips. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, drop trap. <laughs> uh, and you took four points of damage. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can patch that up pretty. There's, a, there's a lot of band aids. Oh. So, uh, two degrees of success. Take them so. both. Take whatever was on there. Okay. So, Actually, so basically, you used up a whole lot of the simple. You know, kind Just of like the, the antiseptics for cuts the and, and the wipes and a lot of this, the, the simple kind of stuff that's easy to resupply. Yeah. But a lot of it's just kind of out of there at this stage. I'm going to try and get out. Are the doors open yet on the rail car? Yeah, I'm, I'm like starting to hop over to the back to bust out like a welding. As right. he's, if he fixes me first and Wraith, then as he's fixing her, I'm going to walk out of like modesty while she gets patched up and just kind of look to the horizon like I'm looking for my falcon. Look at that. Chivalry isn't dead. Mm. It's sweet. What a nice guy. You can, well, do you see the falcon? I don't see the falcon, but I know that it's gonna take a while because we went two to three miles up the Missouri. Um, so I'm going to kind of take a couple strolls in the same direction we just came down the tracks not far at all away from the railroad, keeping my, my eyes open, just kind of looking to the heavens. Watching, watching, watching to see if you can see it. Exactly. Great. Uh, yeah, Jenny, this thing is banged up. Mm. Like, it's actually to the point of now that you're taking the time and there's no rain and you're clearly looking at it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of it that's barely holding on. You can actually see that one of the, um, one of the train wheels that's uh, where a tire is theoretically on the motor home one of the train wheels is actually bent really badly. Okay. Well, I want to start fixing that wheel immediately. That's yeah. the priority. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to probably pull some spare parts. Yes. This thing's banged up. And it's definitely going to take some time to put it together. But you have time at this point. And you looking at this based on your skill, I could tell you that it's going to take about, maybe about 10 hours. By herself or with help? With help, she could probably knock an hour or two off of that, you know? And what time is it? Like 8 a.m., you know, pretty early. So we could, in theory, be on the road again by 6 o'clock at mm -hmm. night. Um, and that's plenty of time to get some food, go hunting. Retrieve right. a falcon? Yes. <laughs> Want right. to do some hunting, Ray? Yes, sir. Uh, I have one other thing I need to attend to first, but I'll uh, set up traps and check on them. Great. Cool. So, let me see how well that does. <coughs> Do I need speed dice for this to tell no. me how long it takes, or just tell me? Speed's mostly again for encounter. Okay. So I got just one degree of success, which is great. Yeah. So and then so the thirty to cash that out is. is he doesn't have to cash that out. We still have this. You one still got from, it. Great. Then I'm okay. only going to make you pay the thirty to get the spare parts. Okay. So okay. I mark off thir I only have 15 no, I think, from right now. The oh, from our total. Yes, okay. from your total. Gotcha. All right. Great. Yeah, so uh, Wraith, you have one degree of success to work with. Do you want to do you want to tell me the story of what you're doing out there while yeah. you're laying the traps? Yeah. Um so yeah, he um he walks out uh, and he looks like there's something just like seriously on his mind and he's kind of like just really confused about it, but then he uh, he goes and he places these sort of like uh, 
like small like bear jaw sort of trap things, mm -hmm. but to catch like small uh, game. So he does those, he sets a perimeter of those, uh, and then he goes back to the rail driver and starts digging through his uh, backpack. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pulls out what looks like a, like a, a record, like a vinyl album, mm. but it's like a, a very elaborate sort of package with embossed foil and like crazy graphics and stuff on the outside of it. And he pulls it open, and inside there's uh, a broken vinyl record mm. um, that looks like it's maybe, it's not totally there out of the whole circle. Uh, it's missing like some shards. Mm -hmm. um, and then he pulls out like in a very elaborate booklet. That yes. It's the same size as the album. It's, it's a lyric book, right? Yeah, well, lyric and art book, mm. basically. And so he starts turning through it, and he, he looks, and the first page he turns to shows what looks like a decrepit sort of creature sil uh, silhouetted by the sun, like screaming. Yeah. And then he turns the p page again, and there are a bunch of other pictures of destruction. And there's a picture of a city, mm. uh, but there's a helicopter in the side of a building, mm. like stuck in the side of this, this burning building. Right. Um, and then he, uh, he looks even more and more disturbed, and then he... Uh, he tries to kind of calm himself down a little bit. And then you read the lyrics yeah. on one of the songs that you've listened to over and over again. In fact, you were in part in writing it. Yeah. And you realize that the, the, <laughs> on the song, The Serpent's Tongue, mm -hmm. is a bunch of words that you remembered hearing from a certain woman in yeah. a certain arch town yeah. that is starting to just... It, you knew it reminded you of something, but now it's there staring yeah. right in front of you. So then he kind of st stumbles back of it and drops the, the, the booklet a little bit, and you see it falls open to uh, another page. is a photo of the band. Mm. Uh, and there are a bunch of other people in the band, but there are obviously two people who look kind of like Wraith in the center of the picture. Mm. And one of them is, uh, looks a little younger, and then there's one that looks a little more confident and like muscular. Great. So. And then are you... Are you putting it away? Yeah, he seems, he seems really shaken. He, he gathers himself and closes up the booklet and starts stashing everything back and puts it back in the bag and kind of looks around nervously. And, says, and uh, Jenny, mm -hmm. I think you would have seen this, at least part of it, at least him putting it away. Mm -hmm. Hey, you uh, got those traps set? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they'll be ready. I, no point checking now. Hey, what is this? <laughs> oh, uh, that's... Um, that's an album from uh, a band I was in before all this. You were in a band? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we were coming, we were coming to uh, the U.S. for for our first tour when um, when the the fall happened. What do you play? Uh, guitar. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, you seem shaken. It's not it, like you. It's it's not important. We've had a very long day. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go check on. I'm gonna go check on the traps. Uh, how much longer until the the rail driver is is fixed? Yeah, yeah. Um, probably this evening around six. Okay, good. Jenny was just coming in to get parts at the moment, but now you've got them. Do you want to go fishing? We're right near the river. Yeah, sure. I've got a big knife. That's useful. Well, I think we have some fishing poles. <laughs> the survival kit would at least give you wire, or like a line, yeah. and a fishing hook. You will not have a pole. I'll go find a stick. I'll tell you what. I'll uh, have your back. You do the fishing. It's not my favorite thing. Okay. You know I just want to uh, talk, right? Uh, <laughs> now that you've just said that... <laughs> I had a sense about it, but I want to check in with this duder before we leave. It's like, hey. You, I'm, uh, you're... I'm outside looking for the falcon, and I'm walking on the tracks, and he's kind of looking at this in his hand. And he keeps looking at it, and he smells it, and he holds it again. He looks up, and he just kind of stares at this guy, <whistles> sees a little moon. <whistles> falcon comes down, because he's wearing a good canvas jacket, he kind of pulls it over his hand a little bit so it doesn't scratch him, because he never knows where the falcon's been, doesn't know if it's scratched and infected, claws could be dirty. So it lands, the first thing he does is he checks the claws, clean, no blood, no flesh, looks good. Pulls, digs his hand in his pocket, pulls out a little scrap, it's rotten meat, it's been sitting in there for a few days, gives it to him, the falcon, lovingly. It's been starving, it's been raining, it's really hungry. It eats it, right? He gives it a little pet, Walks back in, 
since you guys oh. are t well, into the oh. rail cart, kind of with the falcon on his hand. And uh, <laughs> look at you. Yeah. And I go, his name's Max. Max. But I call him friend. Aww. <laughs> Just kidding. He can be dinner too. <laughs> kind of a, as a joke, right? He's laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only I get to kill him though. Oh. Fair point. Hey, um, uh, how, because uh, I was, I go was gonna head out to him. You're, uh, you're okay after whatever you saw back there, right? Uh, I'm gonna kind of like push the falcon who's gonna instinctively, since we're in the sleeper car, flutter up the ladder to the crow's nest and kind of sit right literally in the bird's nest, oh. ironically. So it's, it stays inside? Okay. So, <laughs> kind of stayed inside. And I'll look over at you if you say it, and I say it won't hurt anybody. If you say so. Unless I tell him to. Oh. So then I'm going to look back at you and be like, I'm on a mission looking for, for somebody real special, or she was real special. Not to me, but to somebody. And this special person happens to carry something on her that's really special to me. Okay, well, I'm going to let you be as vague as you want to be, but anytime you need more help, you let us know. And she's gonna catch him stuffing this in his pocket and just turn, kind of turns away, you know? And as she sees that, the color kind of drains out of her face. She goes, let's go. Oh. And I bust out. Okay. I did want to kind of, yeah, as we kind of set up a line, I guess I'm the only one fishing, actually. You came with a gun I'm and I'm watching. A knife. Okay. <laughs> uh, listen, I know we've had to deal with some stuff already, and it's different than what we've had to deal with in the past. Um, I, I didn't know that you had medical capabilities, <laughs> and you've, you've done well to keep it secret so far, and if there's one piece of kind of advice that I could offer you is just to keep it secret. It's a valuable commodity out here, and people will just use you for Band-Aids. What you did back there. Mm-hmm. I want you to know I don't know if I was okay with it or not. I want you to know that I was okay with it, and I don't know how I feel about that. Fair. <laughs> oh, did I catch a fish or yeah. is that construction? Oh, yeah. 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 It's like, that's the weirdest fish noise I've ever heard. It's a, it's a it's fucking long It was supposed to be the reel, but I forgot you had, didn't have a reel. So you have a stick, so it just goes. No, made that sound. I pull it in, I pull it in. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. I'm going to thump it. I'm going to thump it. Oh, I'm going to beat it to death. So you do like fishing? No, I just don't like them flopping around like that. Hit it again. Stop. <laughs> All right. It's a nice, good sized trout. Like. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> like, Wait, huh? so now that's a trout. <laughs> you've got some perishable food. You have to prepare it. Otherwise, it'll go bad in a couple of days. So as you start getting in the evening, um, Jenny, you've taken time to basically take some of the old sheet metal and just make a uh, best of a bumper that you possibly can. In fact, I would even fathom that since this thing curled the metal up together, you're probably able to just recurl it back down and then just take some of the welding equipment and just, just repatch it back up, mm -hmm. essentially. You know, it's not nearly as good as what it was when it was first done, but it's there. And then uh, with a lot of effort, because you have to jack up this giant piece of machinery, you're able to go in there and pull out one of the wheels and reapply it. You guys get done right around six o'clock-ish or so, you know, towards um, the end of the day. What was the result of my uh, traps? Oh, had... uh, your traps yielded um, not a whole lot, but you yeah. did manage to catch a couple of errant squirrels. Okay. That are just, um, you don't need to hear the noise. It's good. It's As they're coming around, maybe one of them got by its leg and it's running around, so you quickly just um, kill it and clean it. Mm -hmm. Maybe one uh, just uh, got caught around the neck, and so it was pretty quick for it. Yeah. But, um, all right. Small game. So, yeah, Rafe brings those two squirrels back to the camp, um, and you can see that he's much more composed now. Like, he's, he seems like he's, you know, his usual self. Uh, and he goes, I brought dinner. Oh, did you? <laughs> I think he brought dinner. <laughs> Who's the woods boy now? It's Band-Aid. 
Don't get cocky. <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, for a record, the kitchen is actually in the conductor situation oh. because it would be oh. using the steam power. Well, then, fantastic! In order to use I'll it do the cook. cooking. So, you know. How very gender appropriate in okay. the 1940s. I actually have my own preparation for squirrels. <laughs> fantastic! You knock yourself out. Nice. So, as you guys are cooking inside of the conductor's seat, you can start to smell the smell of cooked fish and uh, small game. Kind of starting to fill in. Not it's cigarettes. So <laughs> much more interesting and appetizing than just the MRE packets and dried rations that a lot of you have been eating as part of this trip. And so this fresh, perishable food is uh, just cascading an aroma that is just delightful before Jenny starts to get the train back on the road. At this point, Jenny and Miss Ray, I'd like you both to make spot listen checks. I'm not listening. <laughs> I have two door. degrees of success. Um, two degrees of success. Four degrees of failure. Um, actually, I'll just take them out because you're meaning really. Ray, Sorry. you, right. as you're in the, as you're kind of in the conductor's area, uh, talking to Jenny, kind of getting caught up on what's going there, you start to see underneath where the compartments were band-aid first pulled out that container that was right there, and you just see something move. Something underneath the compartment. Yes. W uh, like so underneath. So this is what? the full set of the rail driver bits. There's a lot of small compartments and kind of open areas that's underneath where all the instruments lay out in front of you. And there was originally a box where Asher's stuff was. Like this bit. About that big. Uh huh. But you can tell that there's something hiding underneath. Size concept of what this thing is. Did you just see movement? I just see movement. Around. Yes. So. Um, I have my uh, 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 kukri on me because I've been using it to cook with. Mm -hmm. um, I grab Jenny's arm and I look. I Man, I could really go for a game Psst, of blackjack right now. Jenny. I'm telling you. Jenny, just, shut what? up! What? And as you both look down, you can see a pair of wide doe eyes staring at you from oh, underneath shit. the compartment as you see a rag-colored young girl just underneath the instruments at the moment. And she is doing everything she can to try to just get as far away from you. But you could tell she stirred because the, the smell right, of the right, food right, right, just right. got okay, her excited. Okay, 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 hey, 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 I'm putting this down. I'm putting this down. We're good? Look, it's down. No one's Look, gonna hurt you. Nothing on my hands, besides a lot of dirt. Hey, are you hungry? Yeah? Wanna come out and have some of this fish I cooked up, no? You can tell as you're kind of looking down at her and she pulls her hand away from your outstretched arm that she's just a little too big for this compartment and you can kind of see her legs doing everything they can to cramp up underneath there. Okay, honey, listen to me. Listen to me. I know that you think that it's safer down there than it is up here, but I promise you, if you come up here, I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. You wait for a while, and it takes some time, minutes, before you can kind of see. She does this very bendy, almost contortionist kind of movement as she's able to kind of twist herself around so that her head is closer to where the entrance of the compartment that she fell into in, and she just kind of <laughs> peers her head out. She doesn't come out yet, but she's just right there. She's emaciated enough that you could tell that she's that she could be 10, but she could be anywhere from 10 to 14 okay. at this point. She's just sticking bones at this stage. Hey, Jenny, give me a little of that fish on, on this. <laughs> And did you put it out with the hand? Mm -hmm. She just snatches it as much as she can and just grabs it and just starts woofing it down as quickly <laughs> as she possibly can, keeping her eyes on you literally the entire time. All right. You watch as she just kind of curls back into where she's safely compartmentalized. You can also see at this point kind of how she got there. There's a service compartment that was just on the flip side. You can see it's barely big enough of a hatch, but you can see that it was 
popped open at one point. So she probably crawled out from underneath the train. So she got in from the underside of the train? Mm -hmm. So there's a way in from the underside of the train? Yeah, now you know. From the previous city when we were stopped, when we met Kent. Right? Yeah. Right, okay. right. Okay, honey, uh, one more piece. Uh, okay, <laughs> strength check, strength check. Got you. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Strength check. <laughs> Okay, I got three degrees of success. Okay, you grabbed her hand as she grabbed her last piece, and you have a hold on her, and she just starts screaming it's as okay. loud as she it's can. Okay. Jenny, I am I'm worried because I actually don't know if this girl could be infected. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Jenny just bursts through into the main sleeper car. I have my sword out. <laughs> <laughs> we got a stowaway. A stowaway? Yeah, some girl. Where? I, she's in the cab. Can't I run right over to it? Immediately, I open the door, my eyes go wide. Don't let her bite you. She's a biter. Is she infected? No, just a biter. Does she recognize his voice? She's not processing a lot of this information right now. She's still just kind of trying to grasp herself, okay. Tree, as she's I'm gonna turn around, around so she can see him yeah. over my shoulder. She looks and she hey, kind hey, of- Hey, look, 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 hey. look. Hey, hey. You know how long it took me to find this? You know how long it took me to find you? It's been a long time, Sarah. <sighs> her body just relaxes a little bit as her arms go down and she just passes out. McCrail her head, lean it in with you. First thing you're gonna do is tell me who this little one is before I even let go of her. All right, all right. Blood kind of, Ken gets a real solemn look on his face as his cards are getting called out. Still got this and he kind of nestles it next to her. Sarah knew my family before this whole world died. Many years ago I had what a lot of people have, a wife, a son, a life, a reason. See, I lost my boy four years ago. We lost his mom two years before that. You see, the fire and the war took my boy, but death took my girl. No infection, no nothing. Just death. Just reminds you when you think you got it all planned out, the world says, nah. That town we stopped back in, that's where we're from. I've been looking for this girl for a while. Because this girl, she lost it all too. You grab Sarah's head and she is unconscious at this point, whether just from pure adrenaline or relief. And I, as you carry her, I'm assuming maybe putting her into one of the sleeping yeah, cots. Yeah, I'm gonna put her in the sleeper cot. I'll start examining her right away. She's emaciated. Mm -hmm. She's um, dehydrated. <laughs> we still got that Sarah. She's now. dirty and she may even have some mange going on okay. at the moment. I have basic first aid, I think. Um, you should, you right. do too. But at this point, like, help she's go. not barring, uh, and it takes some time to clean off her limbs enough to mm -hmm. be able to inspect for anything. Yeah. But this girl's clearly been living in trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For God knows how long. But as far as you can tell, she seems clear. Okay, and I saw her eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Totally clear. Okay. I'd like to use the first aid kit and yeah. just apply basic necessities. Great. Yeah, use a depletion on it. You don't have to make a roll. It's just a saline bag and part of it. So um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you force you a roll on that. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Jenny, Wraith, we got we got an entryway under that cab. Can we seal that up, maybe? <sighs> I don't know if we want to. What if we need it? To get out or in? I mean, it's it's pretty secretive it's, to get out. And Jenny, you would actually know about this hatch because it is literally a secret escape hatch. Yeah, I, I think we should keep it. And we don't think any infected can get in there because a little girl did. I mean, infected can be little girls too. They can be small. 
What if we figure out a way that we can open it from the inside, but no one can get in from the out? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do. As you, uh... Before okay, go ahead. you do that, or as soon as you're done with that, when was the last time you got some sleep? <sighs> That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. How far ahead can we see? You're not, I mean, it's still evening, like, so, like I said, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's getting to be dusk, but as far as you see, it's pretty clear driving ahead. You guys have covered maybe 50 miles at this point okay. easily. You know, even just in the time that it took to get food. While it's still enough light out that we can see ahead, how about we let him take the reins? You've been showing him everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how much time do I need to spend on Sarah? Oh, it, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And Jenny, just to clarify, because I have been keeping track, Wraith, Jenny, have well, Wraith, Wraith yeah. uh, so much more so, less so than Jenny. But Jenny's been up for three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. at this point, anything more is just going to be straight exhaustion. Yeah. But you haven't been exerting yourself right. physically very much. I do have um, early bird as well, and and healthy. Like I do have those as which well. Which is so which, which is, is why awesome. <laughs> why you've which is why been you've so good for three days. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna pass out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you? Yeah. I'll take over. Yeah. How about? And I'm just gonna put my hand on her shoulder. I'm gonna look at him. And I'm gonna look at her and just nod like, I got this. Uh, are you driving? I'm sorry. I'm no, driving. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. I'll drive, like to drive. Oh, drive? To drive, because I, I haven't, because I'm the most rested. Uh, what's your driving skill? I mean, I know you got a semi, but we got a train. To a, what do I gotta do? Can't be too hard if it's on a rail. Yeah. Well, what's your, yeah. I can show you the ropes. Well, you get some sleep. I'm gonna let you take care of it. Yeah. I'm a conductor now. <laughs> Come on. Deputy conductor. Deputy conductor. Deputy. So you're, you're driving through the night while she sleeps. Which, well, at least for a little bit while we while we still I'll have. Teach him. We'll let him set it up, and yeah, then maybe yeah. like we'll take shifts and all. Okay. okay. So while eating and sleeping and driving and teaching mm -hmm. occur, uh, it takes a couple of hours. Um, in fact, at this point, you're driving through the night. It starts to get late enough to where you would have to make a choice of whether to turn on the lights or not, or stop for the evening. Uh, according to the map, how where yeah, are where we? Where are we? So you are just outside of New Haven. Since they're asleep and it's just us, I'm gonna make a call. I'm gonna say we're gonna shut off the lights and we're gonna stop here mm -hmm. and we're gonna rest and then start again in the morning. Right. That's not a bad idea, but Thanks. someone. Mm -hmm. Someone should stay up. You and I slept a little bit. I can stay up and, and keep watch. Okay. I'm going to go slightly through the sleeper cabin up to the bird's nest, and I'm going to let the falcon go out for the night, in the night to hunt. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just sit there and chill. Get some sleep if you want some. No, that's not what I'm worried about. I just slept. Um, I got to ask you this question directly, and I need you to forgive me for how direct I'm going to be. I know you got some demons inside you from what you've seen, and we all do, believe me. We all do. That little girl's safe with you, right? I've been looking for her for a long time. Because if you harm a hair on her head, I will kill you, and I will not think twice about it. You guys wake up to an early dawn at the start of a day. It is despicably quiet, but you can still hear the river running rampantly to the left of you, just due north. And um, overall, the night pretty much left the entire area relatively undisturbed. So, toot toot. No, yeah, don't pull it. Toot, toot, toot. Ah, yes. <laughs> don't pull it. Don't pull it. <laughs> okay. All right, I start. After a good six yes. hours of sleep, yeah. you know? Wood in the, the firebox. Yeah. Get that boiler heated up. All right. As soon great. as I feel it moving, I check on the girl. Still out cold. Awesome. Head up to check on him in the crow's nest. How you doing up there? It smells like cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> doing good. Doing good. You want to come down for a break? Yeah. All right. We'll switch it up. I'll uh, I'll wake up and um. Oh, we're moving. Do you need your bird? Max is already here. And the falcon kind of sticks his head through. 
the little crow's nest. Oh, that's so. <laughs> That's a neat trick. Yeah. <laughs> you two should get together with your bird calls. Bring, a, bring some more chitlins out and I give them a little something. And then I hand you one. I take it. Give it to him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to eat it. You don't want to eat that hungry. stuff. You do not want to eat the stuff you don't that came out of his that. pocket. You don't want to eat that. But Yeah, it smells like rancid meat. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to The him. falcon's going to sniff your finger a little bit and then kind of like peck at it. Ooh. Like, oh, he likes you. Oh. Good. Yeah. That's it liking me? He. He? Yeah. You don't like many people, but he does like food. I gotta put it out. And you can see the expression in Kent's eyes for that moment. Like every time he talks about the falcon, he kind of goes away and he's like, he kind of has a little smile, like chuckling, as if you would be petting a dog that he thought was cute. Uh-huh. Ray is looking at you and he just looks so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> And at this point, you can actually see as the falcon is like, it, you can see as the wind kind of starts ruffling its feathers a little bit as the rail driver starting to pick up speed. It, it, <laughs> yeah, oh. takes it. Takes it. Ah! Bounces. Bounce. <laughs> Bounce. 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 Bounces. Bounces out the And you yeah. can see a little bit of it. It's definitely uh, keeping pace. Can we make a check on fuel? Yeah. Um, going banded as you go back to into the conductor's area to inspect the kind of fuel cache. Uh, you can tell that you're you're running relatively low. Like you've got a, maybe about a third left to maybe cover another 50 miles ish or so. Mm -hmm. um, but you're on way more than halfway done, and you've burnt through a third of the coal as well too. Oh, you also burnt through some of the coal when you got out because you fired it out of the right. gate to right. get out of the area. So as you continue to drive forward for, unless you tell me otherwise, another hour or so, you actually start to get into an area where you can clearly kind of see the skyline of New Haven approaching you, and you can see very similar to the town in which you found Kenton um, and even Eureka. Eureka was a little farther away from the rail line, but here you are essentially driving right through the town, mm -hmm. you know? With the river alongside of you, you can actually see a couple of large silos that seem to be adjacent to the rail line, and you can see uh, a large two-story kind of city hall township that kind of seems to be close. And as you begin to get closer, uh, you actually see a lot of people, people, huh? who seem to be coming out and are looking down the rail line towards where you're at. And they just, you can could, you could just kind of at this point, it's so far away, you're just seeing a bunch of people and they're all just kind of waving their hands. Some of them are putting hands back down mm -hmm. as they lift them up. But you can see a whole lot of people just kind of staring down the rail line at you. Uh, I slow down. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Yeah, they don't look infected. Are we sure, Wraith, you looking through? Because they, they, it doesn't matter. They still could be dangerous, even if they're not infected. No, I know. I cock my, my weapon and agree with Wraith. Uh, and I'm agree. still on the rifle. Well, Who's, oh, go ahead. Well, Kent, you're, you're from a relatively close area. Do you know anything about this town? This town isn't gonna hurt us for the most part, to my knowledge. Most of the people here are scavengers that made it from Eureka and moved up. Well, just to be safe, let's stop on our way out of town. So on the edge, of leaving. We're gonna have to give them some warning. I don't think they're gonna like us uh, They're not gonna get off the tracks, you don't think? Well. I, I don't know that that's, yeah. We're gonna cause more enemies if we just barrel through something that hasn't been used in a while. No There's a clearing past the main square we might be able to lose when things clear up, see if it's safe there. I'd say we stop before there and make peace and see if we can pass through. Okay, so as you start to look down the 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 street, you can actually see that a lot of what was previously, and this is kind of the interesting part, I talked to you how there's no trees in this area. It's because you're actually seeing a lot of stumps. You're actually mm. seeing a lot of harvested uh, wood at this stage, where it's a lot of logging and clearing okay. that's been done at this point. Okay, goodish news. And as you get closer, you can kind of see uh, what, what, what appears to be like a slaw mm. to the right of you, like just right before the river. So it's like a logging community. It's a logging community. Well, I'm slowing way down. Slowing way down. Great. And you come across the line, and you can see that, that there is um, uh, a large kind of ramshackle residential kind of buildings, not unlike what you saw in St. Louis with a lot of repurposed residential stations. And then you can see actually a large island 
um, that has rail that comes along the route of it, so where like the track diverts and then it comes back in and you can see like a small township with large slats, kind of like, um, uh, uh, like the old forts that you remember from the frontier in which they've taken large trees mm -hmm. and basically made a wall mm -hmm. yeah. out of it. And that is a, a large part of what is coming along the side of the river that is to the north of you or the right side of the rail line. Mm -hmm. nice. And people have come out and there's a large like bridge that's like a gangway that's coming from that part of the part that part of the wall line leading to the other side of the rails into like the residential township a bit. So yeah, you can see they're all on the train, they're all on the gangway looking at you. So, and you're slowing down to what? I'm, I mean, I'm crawling at this point. Crawling, Great. You all want to stop, right? At this That's point, we need to. the general consensus, okay? All right. All right, so we're stopping. So as you come across the gangway, you maybe go underneath it as steam just as you hear it like just hiss as it comes to a stop. And some of the people up are like, <coughs> coughing as they get out of the way of the gangway and you watch as a fairly large group of people, uh, 20, 30 people, are just waiting, just peering outside. You can see that there's a couple of men who are now taking that group of people and just like shoving them back on side of the gates and you can see that they're heavily armed, mm -hmm. at least with long rifles and pistols as they're basically pushing people back inside. You can hear kind of a uh, scattering of voices like, what are you doing? You don't know who these people are. Get inside, quickly. What? Just stand down. It looks like, looks like something from the safe zone. And it's muffled because you can just hear it barely through the outside of your rail driver. Jenny, what do you want to do? I'm up here. Well, let's talk. Let's talk to them. I mean, we're, we're here, we've stopped. I want to, I want to throw open the door. And I want to say, I am Asher Emerson Stern the Third. No. Uh. They all kind of wave. <laughs> this huh? is my rail right. What is it? Rail driver. <laughs> okay. You watch as one man who comes and like. Who the hell are you? Asher, Asher Emerson Stern. Yeah, no, I got okay. that. I'm here to make a trade deal for the company. I, you can kind of see he's kind of like moving his furs across his face. He's like, okay, let's let's back up a second. Mm -hmm. First of all, are any of you infected? No. Did you did you come from inside the UA? We sure did. Holy shit, guys. The UA made it out fucking west! Huzzah! <laughs> and you watch as everyone kind of throws their hands up like, Whoo! Oh, Band-Aid. Yes. Whoa! Yeah, the UA is here! Yes! Does that mean we can go to the east side? Yeah, that means we can all... There's a fucking train route here! Now, you, now, we've got to cut a deal for the company. <laughs> all right, you watch as like, all right, all right, well. Come on inside. None of none of you. Are, <laughs> we're, we're just so you know, we do have to make sure that we check. I hope you don't mind. We need to actually inspect anyone for bites. Absolutely. Or blood or anything. So <laughs> you watch as you have a couple of officials come out from the small town of New Haven, and they basically, for all intents and purposes, just not like do a full strip search, but they're pulling I mean, no, everything Ray down. starts taking all, all of his clothes and just dropping them in a heap next to him. And he's just standing there glaring at, at, at them while they all well, wait they, to be examined. They I'm just, leaning down with Stingray next to Sarah mm -hmm. to make sure that you know they realize that there's a child there you know, who's still yeah, unconscious. And you can definitely see that a couple of the people are like, oh God. And you look around and he's like, is she fine? Who is this? And he's like, hey, hey, medic, medic, come on out. Uh, someone get a doctor here. Looks like we have a sick child. And you see as like a, a man who is, appears to be kind of waddling more than walking out as he kind of comes out. He's got a long coat up with, uh, with a little bit of a uh, baseball cap coming down as he kind of comes out and goes, oh, sick. Well, can I see her? Uh, oh, God, she's just a child. Oh, my, where did you find her? She's with us. She, she's with you. She looks, have you been feeding her? God, she looks like she's near death. She's important to me. Uh, so you're gonna make sure she doesn't get anywhere close to death. I'm gonna roll Persuade. 
Uh, well, that's fair. Like, you want to persuade him Absolutely. to it. Uh, let's roll against it. In the trough. Oh. In the trough. <laughs> that was a good roll. But I saw though. the roll. That was a good roll. Was it 20? 36? It was a 20-something. 36, and my persuade is uh, uh, 48, so one degree of success. That's my job. That's what I do, mister. Sounds good. Mr. Sounds Good. Mr. All right, Kent. Kent. Mr. Excellent. Kent. Are you the father, Kent? Not the father. And she's not the mother, but this girl is really important to us. That's fair. I, again, she looks like she hasn't been fed for weeks. If you got any food, that might be also helpful. All right, fine. I can understand I'm not getting out of you what I need yet, but here, Mr. <laughs> Taylor. Uh, as she kind of scoops the child up. One of us is going with her. I'll go. And he uh, basically waddles out uh, through the back as you, okay. as you follow along, because he's mostly focused on this at the Go moment. Go for it. So, uh, he's the first one in as Kent comes in, but you are greeted by at least a couple of men who appear to be healthy, strapping, uh, physically fit individuals who all seem to be like on the verge of cautious and excited to see you, but even just the the phrase, turn of phrase, the UA, and the fact that like someone's coming out here is, is having them all fairly hopeful for something. So it's like, Come on, come on inside. Yes, take me to your most important person. I must negotiate. Uh, you sure you got this? I got it. Mr. Right. Stearns, Mr. Stearns, Mr. Stearns the third, sir. Uh, I'm just going to come with you, make sure you're okay. All right, uh, this is my personal bodyguard, I guess. <laughs> he guesses. Uh, I have one. Uh, 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 right, right, okay. Now, if you don't mind, I, I know you're all fairly new here, and, and trust me, we're very excited to talk to people who are on the east side of the river, but I hope you understand that we have rules here. Yes. We have a quartermaster who can take your weapons, bladed and shot, and we'd like you to leave them here, but I assure you we have a full guard safety. Our walls are, are some of the best. Well, Stern Industries are definitely looking for infrastructure, so you're A-OK -okay in my book. Right. Here's my gun. Uh, thank you. Just deliver it to the quartermaster if you can. And you can see there's a gentleman who is wheeling out an old cart that is, <laughs> well, clearly is just a place where you can just unload everything onto it. Wait, so. if we stay in the rail driver, we get to keep our weapons? If we're like, oh, we're going to hang back. And yes. That's an option? Well, yeah, we're hanging back. We're staying in the rail yeah. driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Can I have my gun back? Absolutely. So you're exchanging the AK back for your 30 yeah. six. And you're going to be putting that in there. Take very good care of her. So as you clang down all <laughs> the metal and firearms, pulling the clips out, sliding them back so that there's no bullets in the uh, barrel, you basically leave them all there as, you know, a, a timid young man who appears to, his job is to push the cart out and to push them back in, basically escorts you with all of your weapons into the town of New Haven. Now, New Haven may as well be an island that's fortified with this long timber wall. It's a pretty slick piece of infrastructure. The fact that these trees are anywhere from 15 to 20 feet tall, you know, and the township itself seems to have been uh, originally like a visitor center. Mm -hmm. It's now been converted into an entire community. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's some smaller buildings, some larger buildings, the community center being kind of the biggest. You can actually see that they've made a makeshift clock tower that's uh, standing on a bunch of um, also reinforced logs. In fact, everything that is new in this area is essentially built with new lumber, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a lot of log cabin uh, type of buildings that are around here. And you, um, as you walk in, you can see the large medic that I described earlier who now has a couple of aides and he's given the girl as they're all basically walking straight towards one of the larger buildings that's out in the middle of uh, this township. And at this point, you watch as like a, a man who uh, clearly looks like he was just woken up as he kind of comes out and he's got a shirt that he's literally just finishing button up as his as his uh, dress shirt is still untucked and, and his pants are messy. As he comes in and goes, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You're, uh, at, I'm told that there's someone from Stern Industries? Yep, Asher Emerson Stern the third. I'm the mayor of our little township here of New oh, Haven. Oh, good. Uh, welcome. Thank uh, you. You have to apologize. Mm -hmm. We 
really don't get. What the hell is that anyway? Oh, well, uh, that is a rail driver from Stern Industries. Right. We're setting up a new uh, trade route, and your beautiful town happens to be along the way. Holy shit. I know, right? They're reopening the rail line? Yeah, the Miss Missouri River Runner. Say that three times fast. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a lot of information to process. I understand. Do you have uh, someplace private we could talk and maybe negotiate some of the deals? Uh, yeah, no. We can, we can go into my, um, yeah, we can go into my study. So, he escorts you kind of in. Are you, Our Ray? Mom. You're still hanging We're out. We're hanging out on the rail yeah. driver. Right. So, Ray, is you kind of... Fuck. Uh, <laughs> escort uh, oh, band so like, You're getting deep here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> as you basically walk in through uh, into this part, you kind of see as you go into one of the log cabins, and it just stinks of fish. So, uh, Ash Ramerson Stern, the third, the third. Mm -hmm. um, he watches, he pulls out like a, like a snifter of amber liquid as he pops open the top and pours two glasses like this. So, as you alluded a little earlier, what does the UA want to do with our little town? Well, basically, we just want to go right through it. Uh, you're, you kind of built around the railroad, which I might remind you is UA property. The railroad is UA property. Oh, sure it is. At what point did it become UA property? When we built the rail driver. Ah, yes, the first law of reacquisition. Cheers. Cheers. That's right. As he takes a small sip from his brandy. I um, just kind of look at it. <laughs> yeah, well, there's this thing you mm -hmm. should probably know. We don't really abide by UA laws here because we're not in the UA. As you know, we're out in the middle of the frontier, so we don't really have interest in any claim that you... Easterners may have over our little township, sure. including the rail line. Yeah, and I totally understand that. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I just want to make sure that you know how beneficial this is for both of us. As that moment, you actually hear as the door just slams open as a tall woman with deeply braided, pulled back dreadlocks just kind of bursts in and she goes, what the fuck is a bunch of Yankees doing on this side? And you see it's a tall woman who just is just built like a freaking Amazon as she just comes in and goes, what the fuck are you doing in here? I'm Asher Emerson Sturd the third. Jermaine, why in the hell are we letting Yankees inside of New Haven? I thought that's the whole point of us coming out here was to get away from these assholes. <laughs> Listen, we don't want to cause any trouble. We could just be on our way. You caused trouble the moment you walked right into New Haven. For all we know, Jermaine, he's got hundreds of infected that are barreling down on the other side of him. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right, all right, all right, all right. Marion, it's okay. Uh, yes, there is a good chance that these guys have come from the UA, and I think we've confirmed that at this point. But I think so. We didn't see any infected come along, and did you see that thing? It looks like an armored death machine. Like, Marion, just let me talk to him, all right? If there's anything that comes up that you, as Miss Head of Security, needs to know, I will brief you, but we'll talk about this tonight. Fine. You fucking go to bed with a bunch of UA bastards, and I'll be the one that has to pull your ass out in the morning. He'll have and to take she... me out to dinner first. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, as she just walks out the door and slams the door behind her. Actually... Do you have any explosives inside of that thing? We might. Huh. Make you deal. Mm-hmm. Come here with me. As he comes out through the door, you can kind of see that he's got a bit of a determination in his eye. You can see that there's a purpose here now. As he walks you up to the far side, the river side of the township, you walk up a flight of several um, uh, switchback stairs as you come up to the fishing platform, which looks a lot like a uh, docking pier, mm -hmm. actually. Um, it was hard to see it beforehand because the bend in the river didn't really allow you to kind of see it because it was coming inward. Um, and you look out and you can see that this part of the river is just 
huge. In fact, as you come up to it, you can actually see a lot of the waters pressing up against the wood at this point, and it's severely flooded. And he looks down and goes, see all that water? Mm. It's not supposed to be there. Ah. We have a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you can help us with it, mm -hmm. and you can help make our town a little more safe, mm -hmm. I think I can probably negotiate on your behalf in order to make, make a better deal. If you can take care of that, and he points downriver towards where the Missouri leads into the Mississippi, the direction that you've been coming up from, mm -hmm. and you can see a large dam that just kind of seems to be stuck right in the middle of the river, and you can see that it's raised the water level up significantly. They just finished it a few days ago, and now the water is building up, and my city is gonna flood here very soon, unless that's taken care of. Just to get a clear picture, are we talking about beavers? You think you think beavers built that? I don't get out much. Here, uh, hey, 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 um, 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 Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. Here, give me your binoculars. And he hands them to you. Just, just take a look. Just take a look real quick. All right. As you peer through the binoculars, you look out into the dam, and you can see several like crawling infected that are just crawling across, and you can see as they're pulling flotsam and various elements, and they're just shoving it deeply into the dam as much as they can, and you can see them almost like <laughs> vomiting a little bit as they a little bit of spittle comes out, and they're just patching it against parts, making mortar for the dam. The infected are building structures? We don't have anything to blow it, and I've already sent out a team to try to see what they can do for it, and they didn't come back. Oh. So, blow this dam. You can have your route. I tell you what, Jermaine, Stern Industries has your back. Great. Well, it's nice to hear that someone in the UA gives a shit for once. So, nice talking to you, Asher Emerson Stern the third, as he walks down the switch back. I'll head back to the, the rail, rail driver. driver. Join you. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Are we out of your shot? Awesome, Are dude. we out of your shot? You're all back in the rail driver, so sure. Band-Aid, I gotta hand it to uh -huh. you, honey. I didn't think you had something like that in you, but I bow down to your superior bullshitting technique. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna be able to pass through and we'll get our fuel, but they've got a problem with infected building a dam in the river and potentially flooding them out. Also, it seems like they're swimmers and so once the water line gets high enough over the wall, they'll be able to breach it. So I told them we would help take care of it. Kent yeah, returns yeah. from check, seeing Sarah, right? Right, yeah, so she at did? this point, you've she confirmed did. that confirmed. Sarah's in good care. The doctors hand me, or the doctor, mm -hmm. the town surgeon, hands me a pouch of kind of her belongings, because they put her in a, uh, they had a gown. So right. they put her in a gown, and he hands me the belongings, and he sees the other group, and his head's back to the rail car, right. so he doesn't miss out on anything and kind of just stuffs away her belongings. Walks in and he kind of, I show it to you. Oh, Sarah. She's fine, I got her stuff, but she may have to stay here for a while. Well, we might be here for a while, so. Do they have any coal? Uh, they don't have any coal, but they've got a lot of lumber. Well, if they want to get rid of this dam, if they want to, it's either give me a lot of your ammo so I can use that gunpowder, or they can deal with swimming infected. So we'll, uh... Let's have that conversation with them. We'll, uh, we'll kind of flash forward this conversation and you going back out to talk to Jermaine about it. He is, thinks the idea is great, but they can't give up all their ammo either. So you can barter and bribe with him a little bit to kind of find out how much you need to give versus how much he can give. Sure. So let's go. Yes. Yay. Three degrees of success. Four degrees of success. I got an eight. I rolled an eight. Dang it. I rolled a 16. <sighs> so here's what's going to happen. You got three and I got four. We're essentially going to cancel each other out, granting me one degree of success okay. in this situation. So he will provide some. Call it 40% of the ammo. All right, but then you guys have to cover the other 60. 
45. 45. Fine. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> so to get any reasonable amount of explosion that you would want to separate and maybe send the dam downstream enough to just break it up, you'd be sacrificing all of your small cartridges, all of your heavy shotgun shells, and you wouldn't be spending all of your intermediate cartridges, but you'd be spending all of the 30 odd sock six as well, too. How close is this dam to the community? I mean, can we snipe some of these things in, from yeah. a safe distance? Can you could, we? You could snipe them even from the uh, the fishing lookout. Can we try to kill off this type of infected? Uh, and uh, I don't know that that's a. I mean, there's more where that's they came the from. That's was. not what part. Uh, yeah. They want the dam gone. I have a question: Is there? A, can we spend any of our just all survival, whatever, any extra points to figuring out another solution? Yeah. So if you wanted to spend Gestalt in order to apply some practical skills, it would, or, uh, yeah, practical experience into this, you just have to be a little specific with me on how, where, and why this practical knowledge would come into it. You want to spend some? I mean, I'm fine spending, I mean, whatever it takes to figure out a solution that doesn't leave us completely, Exposed, yeah, yeah screwed water. over with our ammo. What I'll offer is for three gestalt points, which would be like three years of practical knowledge um, that would apply to Lucky Jenny. Uh, I think I have something for you that would help if you're willing to spend. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let I mean, me you're spend already your three gestalt. Structural engineer and stuff. Yeah, so I, that, yeah. yeah. That makes and sense. Why didn't we get any explosives in you our thing? That down on the back. Yeah, that absolutely. So, uh, Jenny, I'm basically giving you a gestalt skill of local knowledge. Okay. All right? You've been around a lot, and there's actually a guy that you remember back in St. Louis who was kind of a bit of a drifter, and you heard he was out from west, and he had mentioned something about a township, all right? He didn't expressively name drop New Haven or anything, mm -hmm. but he had talked about a, a little bit of a, uh, a river town that fits this description a little bit. And um, over cards, you had basically just talked about the area a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? And he had mentioned before that before the war, uh, north of the river, there was a couple salt mines mm -hmm. that were north in the mountains across the river as well, too. And that gave you a little bit of a light bulb on that, well, if there's a mine, mines of dynamite, mm -hmm. right? And it might be a bit of a hike to get over the river and then go explore these salt mines. But if there's going to be any explosives, it would be in something like that. All right. I've just finished telling you all of that. Okay. <laughs> and so we're going to go. We're going to go check it out. Oh. Um. Hmm. What if we also bring along some people from the town if uh, they're willing to? I think that's a wonderful idea. Fifty-fifty. This. As you walk back into New Haven and you go back to. Jermaine. Jermaine's study. You watch as he's sitting there, still arguing with Marion a little bit. As he pops and goes, ah! All right, Asher, what's it gonna be? You have yourself a deal. <laughs> See, Marion, I told you! They can be assholes, but hey, at least these ones need something from us, so they can be assholes with a purpose. So cool! Every asshole has one. <laughs> so you're gonna, you're gonna blow the dam? Well, we have a few steps uh, that we're going to take in order to make that happen. Okay, go on. So, our crack engineer from Stern Industries has mentioned that there were some salt mines nearby. Oh, you wanna go to the mines? Well, we're hoping to find some leftover dynamite or supplies that might have been left there. Oof, um, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Unfortunately, we don't really know the area very well, so we're gonna take a team of your people as well. He looks to Marion, and Marion looks to him. Jermaine, if anyone's gonna go, it's me, all right? Because I'm not letting these kids out of the sight. And more importantly, we don't really have, and actually this is Jermaine going to him. Yes, Marion, you can. And to be fair, we don't really have another option at this point. So just go with them and just, just don't get fucking killed, okay? Yeah, no, I got it. Listen, Stern Industries is happy to have you. She didn't even wait for you to finish that moment as she just walks out through the yeah. door. That's fair. Yeah.